They're going to get better then. <laughs> the thing is, is that I'll tell you what I think is what Coach Saban's going to talk about is in that second half, when they let off the throttle yes. just a little bit, that's something that's not even tolerated. It's one of the things I think the reason why they carried over from a national championship game a victory, and now they opened up so strongly this season, is they don't tolerate any coasting in Alabama. 2010 stuff was talked about a lot, how they responded to the <laughs> yeah, last yeah. time. I, I know they're looking at at Western Kentucky, but they have Arkansas September 15th. Absolutely. And you at Arkansas, and Arkansas has had this slated all offseason because the last two years they've lost five games, four of them come to LSU and Arkansas. Tonight on ESPNU, All-SEC quarterback Tyler Wilson leads the Razorbacks high-flying offense against the Warhawks. Tyler from the shotgun, looking deep, caught for a touchdown! Louisiana Monroe, Arkansas, tonight at 7 on ESPNU. As a leader, it might be ultimately the best growth experience for this entire team, but specifically Tyler Wilson as the inherent leader of an offense that has really been the hallmark of what they do at Arkansas. Louisiana Monroe won the toss. They have deferred. So Arkansas will start with the football. There is Dennis Johnson. Arkansas's all-time leader in kickoff return yards. He could be the SEC's all-time leader before season's in. And Justin Manton is going to kick it off for the Warhawks. And we're underway here in Little Rock. Through the back of the end zone, Arkansas will start at the 25. And this offense gives it again to Edwards, looking for room on the outside. None there, stretched out and pushed up. Browning, pressure, dumps it off to Centarius Donald to the end zone, touchdown! Centarius Donald. Caught it in the backfield, runs it in, and just like that, Louisiana Monroe draws first blood. What he's able to do as far as touchdowns to interceptions, they protect the ball. Johnson steps out of a tackle, gets into the secondary, and across the 35-yard line down at the 36 of first down for Arkansas. All right, a look at tonight. He delivers the football on time to back on the ground to Niall Davis. And he gets out across midfield and then takes a late hit. At least that's what the Arkansas bench thinks. For Darrow Smith hit him after the seven-yard game. And it will be Johnson here. Finds running room right up the middle and bangs his way inside the 40-yard line. Hamilton lined up at the bottom of your screen. He'll come on the crossing route. Wilson looked at him now under pressure. Throws it his way. Caught Kobe Hamilton. To the 20-yard line, a first down for Arkansas. Ninth play of the drive, second down and nine. Again, pressure. Wilson gets rid of it to the end zone. Has a man. Julian Horton, did he stay in? You bet. Touchdown, Arkansas. A 20-yard touchdown pass. Tyler Wilson to Julian Horton, the junior from Norcross, Georgia. There's the deep ball, finally able to drop it in there on a dime where he wanted it. Protection still broke down there late. Now Davis leaking with a healthy ball is going to hurt him this season. No one anticipated that one, I think, even after the Browning running out of time, hit, rattled, and thrown down at the 39. Alfred Davis and Chris Smith, a big play for that Arkansas defense. I remember 2010. He didn't really get rolling until about after the first third of the, of the season. Second down and nine to the outside into the flat. Here is Kobe Hamilton. And it's going to be very close to an Arkansas first down. Isaiah Newsom, the safety steps up. Real clean pocket. Second and five. Complete to Bragg, the tight end. Boy, he has got soft hands. And he moves so gracefully for a 6'3", 236-pound tight end. He picks up 15, and Arkansas moves the sticks. A lot of passing in this. That's been a tough week for the Pac-12. Touchdown, Arkansas. Kobe Hamilton. A 39-yard touchdown pass from Tyler Wilson. 
Oh, and he's kind of leading the offense with the absence of Bobby Petrino. Dennis Johnson gets it on the pitch, looking for him on the right side and finds him. Not over the 25, lowers his helmet, runs over Cordero Smith. And he'll pick up eight yards to start at the 13. Niall Davis, nice spin move after taking a hit. Isaiah Newsom comes in to clean him up. All right, Allison, second and six. Time to throw. Wilson deep down field. Man, wide open. Caught by Mikhail McKay. The freshman takes it down to the 22-yard line. And that will make Paul Petrino happen. That speaks to what Allison just talked about. Absolutely. Ask if you shall receive. A nice coaching job on the sideline. You actually get over the ball, and you hit him with a hard count for a free five yards. First and goal from the three. Here's nine. Touchdown. Arkansas. Three yard touchdown run for Niall Davis. Browning to Edwards. Hit and down. Doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Browning. Incomplete. Again, well defended. Colby Harper, the intended receiver, but it's knocked down at the goal line. Browning to the end zone. Incomplete through the hands of Tavares May. The defense holds. Arkansas takes over with 14 seconds to go. Crowd getting behind this defense. Third down and 10. Browning intercepted by Rasner. interception for Rasner and he brings it back to the 36 yard line it's a 33 yard return for Ross Rasner and Browning had his bell rung just when we're talking about Ross Rasner makes a great play on the ball but Paul Haynes dials up a blitz you see Alonzo Highsmith he comes untouched guy at this point Brandon Allen been handed the reins of this offense while we still await what happened with Tyler Wilson. That snap is clean. Pressure from the backside. Got rid of it in time to Hamilton. And that's a first down for Kobe Hamilton. Just like Tyler Wilson, Brandon Allen finds a comfortable target in Hamilton, and he picks up the first. Allen away from center. Play fake. Has time. Now the pocket collapses. Steps up. Lobs it downfield. It's complete to Gray. First down and more. Out of bounds at the 17-yard line. That's got to feel good for Brandon Allen, the freshman. Brandon Allen does a great job keeping things alive. As the, as the protection starts to drop, you see him with the play fake. Things just develop slowly. Didn't like what he saw downfield, and he's flushed just a little bit, but has the awareness to find Chris Gragg with a number of different personnel groupings. Chris Gragg allows him to do that. Allen to the end zone. The corner, Mikhail McKay, right on cue. The freshman receiver hauls it in. I'll tell you what, it's like they just reloaded quarterback. Tyler Wilson emerged due to injury, and now we're seeing Brandon Allen. This moment isn't too big for him. He drops it right in there on a dime. Here's Jairus Edwards, touchdown ULM. Going for it on fourth down, pays off for Todd Berry. They keep the drive alive, and they punch it in. The football otherwise way behind in the down and distance. Now second and 17 from the Arkansas 46. They go to Edwards in the flat. It's around one defender. And then finally brought down by Rasner, who steps up and makes the play. Fourth down, Browning throws. Caught! Kevin Steed. Touchdown, Louisiana Monroe. Right now, you are not doing what your coach should do. You have to step up. Some biting comments from Paul Petrino. Here's Greg. Catch turns to get upfield. Knocked down at the 23 by R.J. Young, so he's going to be short of the first down. He's to have your offense at least possess the football. They haven't gotten it. Browning complete. Brent Leonard gets whacked by Darius Winston. It's a gain of four. 
Dylan Breeding. Now trying to do to ULM what the Warhawks couldn't do. Pin him deep inside the 10. And they're going to spot this ball at the 1. Browning juggled and dropped. Tavares May couldn't haul it in. Fourth down. What does Todd Berry do here, Stitch? I think you kick it away again. I think there's an opportunity to continue to play field position. Arkansas hasn't demonstrated an ability to sustain drives with Allen under center. Other than that first drive, ah, if they get the Oof. completion right there. And you see Highsmith. And Tevin Mitchell, who was knocked out earlier in this game. We'll get an update when we come back. Complete silence here at War Memorial Stadium as they have brought a stretcher out. Tevin Mitchell, the Arkansas starting cornerback, down on the field. A helmet-to-helmet -helmet collision with teammate Alonzo Highsmith on the last play. Good news is Highsmith was able to get up. We've seen him walking around. However, Tevin Mitchell is still down. Earlier today in the game between Tulane and Tulsa. Bad injury to Devon Walker, safety for Tulane. And here tonight in Little Rock, Tevin Mitchell, who was injured earlier in the game, came back in, now ready to be carted off with 7.26 to go here in the fourth quarter. And it was completely silent. You know, this is moments like these where uh, it doesn't matter what color jersey you have on. You see you know, Louisiana Monroe sideline. They are just as intent uh, on this situation and hopeful. See Tevin Mitchell. You, know, you always hope in instances like this that you get the thumbs up or something to indicate uh, that there is still some movement. It seemed as if he was writhing around a little bit, um, which doesn't sound good, but in instances like this where you think there might be you know, a neck type of an injury, any movement mm -hmm. is always good to see. Tevin Mitchell, who had a solid freshman season a year ago, going to be counted on a lot this year. And here is the collision with Alonzo Highsmith. And it's a solid shot. You see Highsmith as well. Um, but you talk about it, just the size difference. And you see the legs moving there after the shot, which is you know, it's encouraging. You know, even you see Devon Walker earlier today for Tulane apparently was unable to breathe mm -hmm. uh, after his injury. But any movement at this point in time, once they get him secured on that board, you're know, always hopeful that when he comes up that there's a reason to cheer. This Arkansas program has gone through so much over the last year. The death of a teammate, Garrett Ekman, a 19-year-old tight end, died last November of a heart attack. Of course, the off-field issues with their former head coach, Bobby Petrino, which led to a firing and some national embarrassment. John L. Smith brought in to try and patch that situation up. And it's been a roller coaster ride of emotions for these Arkansas Razorbacks over the last year and change. It has been. Man, coming into this game, that's something the coaches talked about was the unity that this team has demonstrated. Um, you can see this here, though. It's it's inclusive of the opposition, even. As Louisiana Monroe, this is it's a fraternity. Anyone who's out there that plays this game in situations like this, um, you recognize that. 
you're all pulling for the exact same thing. It was a hard-fought game, much tighter game probably than many would feel like. But now they're all rowing in the same direction. They want Tevin Mitchell to be okay after that shot that he took. Under duress as you transition to quarterback. Blocking the back on this return. Leonard, good run, but you're right, I think it's going to come back. Inside the 30 yard line before he's finally hauled down. There are a couple of penalty flags down, and unfortunately, another Arkansas player is slow to get up. Well, this night can't get any worse for Arkansas. Cody Walker now, the number two fullback. Also plays on special teams, is writhing down on the turf. And there's no Here. timetable for his return. Already down a fullback, now Walker is down. They can't have a yet another injury at the fullback position. We talked about that quite a bit. Cody Walker, he's going to get blasted. And this one is pretty, actually, it looked like a block in the back. He gets tripped up. It looked totally incidental. The block in the back comes a little bit later, but the injury, you see Cody Walker go down. Ross Rasner just gets blasted. No chance that the helmet was in front on that block. Second and 10, Browning. Going to get ahead for maybe a yard gain. Jared Green, the defensive tackle for Arkansas, pulls him down. So Browning steps up. Caught! Touchdown! Brent Leonard! With 47 seconds to go, the Warhawks, an extra point away from tying this one up. Excellent job neutralizing the running attack. Good run. Here's Niall Davis. Out to the 44-yard line. And a timeout called by from the 43-yard line. 20 seconds to go, Browning. Deep down the middle of the field, taking a shot, has Leonard. Incomplete. Darius Winston. To get through this overtime, here are the rules for OT. You see there, you know, they change. We're going to force you to go for a two-point conversion. The 25-yard line and in, and, and frankly, Louisiana Monroe has had opportunities in the red zone, in the red area, throughout this second half. Kick is up, and it is good. Arkansas, here's the ball game. Browning, being chased, finds the lane. He's got the first down, making his way to the end zone. Touchdown, Louisiana Monroe has pulled off the upset. Colton Browning, what a night. He's downstairs with Allison. Colton, you guys pull off the upset, getting the victory in overtime. What is going through your mind right now? Oh, man, just a lot of adrenaline. Uh, you know, we're really excited. We knew that we can come out here and if we executed our game plan that we could play with them. We believe that from day one. You know, we did a great job this offseason preparing, and, you know, the school board shows, you know, we prepared well, and we won the game. We're really excited. Take us through that last play. Well, fourth and one, we kind of ran a play action. Try to get a quick little uh, out to the side, but... They covered it well, and then went to my back, and then I seen a big old hole backside. And, you know, just ran for it and ended up scoring touchdown. What does this win mean for your program to get the upset in Little Rock against the number eight ranked team in the country? Uh, you know, our program, you know, our coaches do a great job with us, make sure we prepare well. And, you know, I think it, I think it shows exactly how far we've come and what our coaches have done for us and what our players have done. And we're really excited about the rest of the season and preparing next week for Auburn. Colton, go enjoy this. You deserve it. Thank you. Colton Browning, our Wrangler, five-star player of the game, 481 total yards. He had four touchdowns, three through the air, and the game winner in overtime on the ground. And it took all of it. What an unbelievable performance, a heroic performance from the quarterback position. And I tell you what, if you're, if you're the Auburn Tigers, you're nervous about next week. But week two brought the unexpected. 
The snap, a fake, Browning rolling, looking, goes the other way, going to run, first down, 10, 5, touchdown, Warhawks! Warhawks win! Colton Browning scores from 16 yards away, and the Warhawks have won this game. The Razorbacks, number eight in the country, fall in overtime to the ULM Warhawks. You know, it's 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 disappointing. You work hard all, all summer and all pre-fall and, and you expect to win that game. We should have won it. Um, came out and played pretty well the first half, played good the first drive of the second half, but uh, we didn't step up and make enough plays after that. So um, it's just something that we didn't get done, so we got to come to work tomorrow and, and work as hard as we can and come up with a great plan. And players got to come in and practice hard, and we all got to come together and, and stick together and, and find a way to win the next one. Players are going to have to lead. They're going to have to push each other at practice. Work hard to make plays in practice, so then it'll show up in the game. Uh, very disappointed, of course. Um, you know, we we feel that we haven't played to our potential yet, uh, of course. And you know, um, but uh, we got to bounce back. I mean, it's a long season. Can't point fingers. We're all going to look ourselves in the mirror and 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 move on. You know, and go back to work tomorrow. You know, the big thing is is, is I think defensively, as I look at it, is we got to simplify. You know, we got we can't have our guys out there thinking too much. We gotta we gotta simplify and making sure that, that they know exactly what they're doing. Um, and I think they can play better, you know, for us. He made plays, you know, he made he made plays, he played well, uh, you know, and we didn't, you know, we didn't make those plays. So we just gotta make sure that we solidify all that stuff and, and go to work tomorrow and get better. Top ranked Alabama coming to town later this week. And the Hogs looking to regroup after an overtime loss to ULM and Little Rock. And you talk after the ball game about the importance of staying together right. now when a lot of things will be fractured. Well, exactly. You, you know, the first thing that happens is after a loss uh, of any sort, you know, everybody has a tendency to point fingers and uh, to place blame. And uh, it takes no courage to do that. What we try to tell our guys is, hey, uh, anybody can do that. What takes courage is to stand by your decisions, stand by your teammates' decisions, stand by their actions, and defend those actions. It's been almost 36 hours, and the most recent blow to the Razorback football program still resonates. In the midst of the loss to unheralded Louisiana Monroe, star quarterback Tyler Wilson left the field at halftime with a head injury and never returned. We lost our focus, you know, we wasn't the same team we were the first half. We kind of lost our identity there too, and you know, guys just thought they were just going to uh, just lay over and give it to us, and we just didn't have that same fighting look in eye that we did the first half. You know, you, you scored 21 points in the first half, you know, with Tyler in there, and we're playing real well. Came out in the third quarter, and, and Brandon takes us right down the field and score, and that was the only drive we had in the third quarter. You know, that, that hurts when you really stop yourself and, and beat yourself, and you know, that's something you can't do. What's really disheartening about it is we had control of the game, and um, we just let it slip away. We didn't execute the game plan the way we uh, we practiced all week, so you know it hurts, but it's, it's time to move on. And you know we have a big game, so there's not really a whole lot to be said to get us excited for this one. Wilson's injury and the Razorbacks' stunning defeat sent shockwaves through college football. Their upcoming game, originally a matchup of two top ten programs from the SEC, is now number one Alabama versus an unranked Arkansas team that could be without its best player. And I think we have to make plans this week. As you know, going with Brandon and Brandon, probably be Larry and we probably will not have Tyler, I would guess. I think we have to plan it that way. For Wilson, the possibility of missing Saturday's game is especially devastating since he passed on the NFL in the spring for a chance to finally beat the Crimson Tide. When I decided to come back, I said, hey, I haven't beat him in, in my tenure here. I mean, there's, um, you know, there's there's certain things that I think as a player you want to get accomplished. Uh, you you want to, you know, that's kind of been the game that's burdened us. You're disappointed, but what you have to do is kind of, hey, all of our guys are disappointed. Okay, so go, go on and wrap your arms around those guys and try to get them back up.
to where they should be. But this, hey, it's not going to be the first time in your life you're going to feel bad. You're going to have adversity all through your life. How are we going to deal with it? I'm looking forward. Let's move on to Alabama. I think we have to do, uh, without a doubt, a great job of preparation this week. And our guys have to bounce back, and uh, we have to get it done. College Football Final is presented by AT&T. Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, and Mark Bay. We knew we were starting in the SEC. We just never imagined it would be in Little Rock with Louisiana Monroe and Arkansas. Tyler Wilson, the Razorback star quarterback, had to leave the game, didn't come out for the second half, took an absolute beating. The injury only described as above the shoulders, who would be replaced by Brandon Allen. Louisiana Monroe at one time down 28-7. Now 28-21, Colton Browning finds Brett Leonard. He had over 400 yards in the air. Game is tied at 28. 31 seconds left for the Razorbacks to save themselves. Allen, Brandon Allen, the redshirt freshman. Oh, he hit Chris Gregg, and he batted it in the air, picked off by DeCorus Ford. Right through Gregg made it. Oh, terrific job of just concentrating on the ball. It's the old tip drill. Find it, find it, find it. Come down with it. Monroe couldn't score. The Warhawks, they'll get it into overtime against the Pigs in overtime. Arkansas, they have it first. Third and 15. So looking like it's going to be the game of the week on ESPNU as chosen by us. <laughs> Fires to the end zone for Kobe Hamilton. He can't get it. Razorbacks had to settle for a field goal. They're up three. You know how dangerous that is to only be up three in overtime. Third and eight. Browning, who threw for more than 400 yards to Tavares May. Now Todd Berry, decision time again. He scored once on fourth down. Now he's going for it on fourth and one. You like this call, Lou? I love this call. You like it when it works. Oh, I love it when it works, but it was very poorly defended by Arkansas. Colton Browning, who did most of the damage through the air, does a lot with his feet. And Todd Berry and Louisiana Monroe, their first victory against a ranked team, stunning the Razorbacks in come-from-behind fashion. 34-31, to 31, number eight goes down to an unranked Sun Belt opponent. Well, a lot of that was just kind of putting it in Colton's hands and letting him kind of go do something with it. But you want to make sure that on fourth down, the guys that can make plays for you can make plays. Certainly Colton made a lot of those. And we knew we knew we were up against an awful lot here. This was this was going to be a difficult win for us. We knew we had to just kind of lay it all on the line. We'd already told the players going into this that that's what we were going to do. And so they were, they were expecting it, so they weren't surprised. And I think, you know, when you're not surprised, you can kind of go out and perform. That is not the SEC storyline we expected to lead the way on college football final. By the way, that game of the week will be on ESPNU Monday night, 8.30 Eastern time. If you missed it, you don't want to miss the replay for sure. Uh, one thing that Arkansas would rather not see a replay of, Mayday, is the way their quarterback uh, was completely unprotected, it seemed, for most of the first half. And you would think that interim head coach John L. Smith would devise a way to protect his trigger man. The most important player on your offense and your football team is Tyler Wilson. You can't let him take a beating. Against Alabama last year, he took the same type of beating. And if you learned anything from last year, he's the guy. He's the rock of your offense. He makes this offense hum. And with him in there, you win football games. Without him in there, you lose games. In this game against Louisiana Monroe, they couldn't find a way to protect him. It was either a blitz or someone coming loose. In this offense, you need to go max protection. If you've got one player that can help you in football games, you protect him, and Arkansas didn't, and that was the major reason why they won, because in the second half, they only generated 107 yards total offense. But how many times have we sat and watched Arkansas play and marvel at the courage that Tyler Wilson has, because he takes a pound, because he'll wait till the last second, he's completely oblivious to the rush. But once they lost him, they lost their leadership as well. And the longer the game went, when it was gone the line, Arkansas tried to make plays individually. For example, on the fourth and one where the touchdown was scored by the quarterback on a scramble, three players from Arkansas ran upfield trying to make a play. He ducked underneath them. Should have been a no-game play. But it's not because they didn't want to win. It's because they wanted to win too much and somebody had to step up. and Nobody did. As Wilson left the game and the pressure started to mount, you could see just what you're talking about happening. Arkansas started to press. They had such high hopes. 
been through so much with the entire Bob Petrino fiasco and John L. Smith coming back to take over, and the Hogs go down in excruciating fashion, 34-31. But as difficult as the loss was, it was not nearly as difficult as an injury that happened during the game. This is Tevin Mitchell of Arkansas. You see him on his back, number eight there, after colliding with the teammate. Now, he was carried off the field. We've gotten great news in the post game. Tevin Mitchell was moving. The prognosis is believed to be good. So certainly uh, our best going out to Tevin Mitchell in a situation that we feared at the time was much, much worse. He was responding uh, to people attending to him just as soon as the injury occurred.